Welcome back to my channel, Cord Cutting in Sports. This video is going to be uh, my NFL cord cutting guide for the 2023 season. So this is just basically the video version of the you know PDF file that is uh, listed on my website, showing you all the different options you have to watch uh, NFL games either for free or obviously um, some options for a cost um, for this upcoming season. So first, here's a brief rundown of the things I'm going to cover in the video. Um, so obviously, you know, feel free to jump ahead to uh, there are things that you specifically want to hear and, you know, things that you're familiar with that you don't need to listen to. First, I'll just talk briefly about what's new for this upcoming season, then uh, talk a little bit about local and national games versus out-of-market games, uh, touch on the main NFL channels, then do kind of a summary of the different broadcast windows and channels uh, that make up those windows, basically days and times. Um, then talk about some free ways you can watch games. Then go through a summary of the various paid streaming services that are out there. Uh, mention some things that you just need to be aware of or know about. Share after that, share some uh, charts that I have that are helpful in kind of summarizing things. Uh, then I'll talk about the NFL playoffs a little bit. Lastly, I'll give my overall rankings and preferences. And then at the end, obviously wrap up, you know, any questions or whatever you may have. All right, so what's new for this 2023 season? So there's been uh, basically price increases across the board. Basically, since the end of last season um, or in the middle of last season, you know, every service has increased its price, except technically Hulu Live, which will have a price increase coming up in October. Uh, more Monday Night Football games will air on ABC and ESPN Plus compared to previous years. Peacock, you know, streaming service that NBC owns, will now carry two exclusive games this year, one regular season game and one postseason game. Uh, flex scheduling has now been expanded, and it applies to both Thursday Night Football and Monday Night Football. Previously, it only applied to Sunday Night Football. NFL Plus, the streaming service that uh, the NFL basically created last year, uh, now includes NFL Network in both of its plans, and it also includes um, you know, the Red Zone, NFL Network Red Zone channel in its premium plan. And lastly, NFL Sunday Ticket, um, after I think it's 28 years on DirecTV, is now being offered by YouTube and YouTube TV. So that's just a brief summary of the major changes for this upcoming season. All right, now, uh, just want to mention about local and national versus out-of-market games. So Sunday afternoon, meaning the games that start at 1 o'clock Eastern time or 4.05 or 4.25 Eastern time, um, I refer to them in here as Sunday PM games, um, you know, which are the ones that CBS and Fox broadcast. Uh, the only way to watch games which are out of market um, to what's being shown in your area live is via NFL Sunday Ticket. There are some, you know, kind of like, I guess you would consider alternatives to that, but they either um, only offer replays or they only offer live games on mobile devices. Um, although that technically would be in market, so that wouldn't apply to this. Um, or you have Red Zone, which uh, you know jumps around between um, different games at different times. So you're not seeing the full game there. You're maybe only seeing like bits and pieces of it. This so this guide is mainly going to focus on watching local, you know, in market games and national games. National games are like Thursday night football, uh, Monday night football, Sunday night football. And, you know, the, the international ones and Sunday morning and, and so on. Uh, but I will have, you know, a section about NFL Sunday ticket, which is basically what you need, you know, like I said, to watch the out-of-market Sunday afternoon uh, games. All right, so here on the screen you can see uh, the main, you know, NFL uh, channels that will carry games. And... In addition to all the channels listed there, I've got, you know, kind of like a descriptions of the various times that they air or the name of the program that they air, you know, Monday Night Football, Sunday Night Football, so on. I also have the list of the various apps, you know, that you can use to sign in uh, to watch the games on. <clears throat> so, 
Um, I won't bother, you know, obviously reading uh, all these things out. And then at the bottom, you have kind of like your online only, um, what you might want to call channels or services. You know, at the top, those are all basically broadcast networks or linear cable channels. So, you know, at the bottom, we get like Amazon Prime and ESPN Plus, you know, Paramount Plus um, and Peacock. All right. So here is a chart and I'll have a direct link to this so you can you know, check out the uh, the image at a, a larger size um, in the description below that basically has the different kind of what you would call like broadcast uh, windows, so to speak. And it's broken down by total number of games that's in like each what you consider broadcast window or broadcast category. And then the channels that are airing those games and then the total, uh, the different options you have to watch those games. So this is meant to be just like a resource document. Um, but you basically, you know, you start off, you have your Sunday afternoon games, you know, which are regional or, I mean, sometimes the, the, the late game is national. If the station CBS or Fox only has one game to televise. Um, but they also have like Thanksgiving games. And also because of the way Christmas falls this year, they have games on Christmas as well. So, you know, those are your CBS and Fox games. Um <clears throat> And there's going to be 204 total of them. And then you see the other various kind of groups as you go along the rest of the columns. You know, you have Sunday Night Football, which technically includes several games that are not on Sunday night, like the Thursday um, Thursday opening game of the season, Lions at Chiefs. That technically is Sunday Night Football. It's on NBC, even though, tech, even though it's technically on a Thursday night. Um, and then... You know, for Thursday Night Football, there's going to be one game of that, which is technically on Friday afternoon, um, because there's not Thanksgiving's Thursday night. So the Thursday Night Football game that Amazon Prime has will technically be aired on Friday. And instead, the Thursday Night game that day is going to be um, on NBC. And then you have Monday Night Football. And note that's also going to include two Saturday games, which are going to air on the last weekend of the regular season. And then you've also got... Um, actually, well, no, I guess, sorry, that's incorrect. That's actually split up into the separate column, uh, next to it where I have Saturday afternoon and evening and then like, and then Christmas Eve. Uh, so those are kind of like some random things that I basically just had to group together in one, uh, category. So yeah, there's basically going to be a triple header on NFL network, um, on a Saturday in December. And then there's also going to be like he said Christmas Eve games, and then there's also uh, one the one regular season game on Peacock. And then there's also, uh, lastly, the Sunday morning, uh, basically 9.30 a.m. Eastern time games, and all the international ones, you know, and four of those are airing on NFL Network. One's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. So this just kind of breaks down kind of like those different broadcast windows, which stations are carrying those games the different ways to get those stations um, if you want more detail on like how many games will be airing on each specific channel i did a separate video on this there'll be a link in the description below that you should definitely check out because i have another excel spreadsheet in there which goes uh, basically shows the total and like week by week of you know okay this week there are you know this many games on this station and this many games on that station and this service and whatever. Now, what are some free ways to watch games? So obviously start with an antenna, you know, that with antenna, you can pick up ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC, and you can watch, you know, any of the games that those stations are broadcasting um, for minimal cost, basically just, you know, cost to buy your antenna. Now, a thing to keep in mind, too, is that any cable channel games, so that's Thursday Night Football, Monday Night Football, NFL Network um, games, also the ESPN Plus game, the one exclusive game on that, um, the one exclusive Peacock game, basically anything that's not on an over-the-air uh, channel will be broadcast on a local channel in the market of the two teams that are playing in that game. So, for example, I mean, we'll get to this later, but the Peacock regular season game is Bills Chargers on December 23rd. So in Buffalo, there will be a local station airing that game. In uh, Los Angeles, there will be a local station, you know, for the Chargers uh, airing that game. So in those two markets, um, individuals do not need to subscribe to Peacock in order to watch that game.
they will be able to view it on a local channel. And then uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, Amazon, for all of its Thursday Night Football games, it broad broadcasts them for free via Twitch. So I believe it's either either the mobile app or um, on the website. I mean, I last year I watched them just on the website, you know, so on a desktop computer, you know, hooked up to a TV. But I think those are the two main options to watch it for free on Twitch um, for Thursday Night Football. All right, so now let's talk about the streaming uh, services, you know, the paid options you can have. So start off with Sling. It's the oldest one. You know, it's been around since 2015. It has two basic plans. Uh, they each went up in price last December. So orange and blue are each $40 a month. If you combine them, the total is only $55 a month. Then it also has sports extra plans. It's $11 a month for orange. It's $11 a month for blue. But again, if you combine them, meaning you get Sling Orange and Blue and the Sports Extra add-on, which gives you the channels from both of the um, you know, Sports Extra packages, that's $15 a month, meaning the total cost all in would be $70. Uh, the DVR is rather small. It only gives you 50 hours for free. It um, You can pay $5 more per month to bump that up to 200 hours, but that's still, again, relatively small compared to a lot of the other offerings. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that it only allows one stream on all the orange channels, and that um, those are primarily are the ESPN-related channels. The blue channels uh, do allow three streams. Um, it does not carry uh, very many local channels it doesn't carry cbs anywhere it carries abc fox and nbc only in a you know handful of markets however if you are in one of the few markets where it does carry all three of them then you do have to pay five dollars extra per month um, and those stations are all on the blue package in addition to like nfl network uh, espn is in the orange package and nfl network red zone is in the sports add-on you know sports extra package for um, the blue package. So my opinion for Sling is that uh, it is still the cheapest option out there just to get ESPN. However, it has a very small DVR. Um, you can only use one ESPN stream uh, at a time, which might not be an option or might not be an issue so much for pro football, but if you're a college football fan, you can run into issues with that. And like I said, it's missing the broadcast networks, your over-the-air channels uh, in most markets. So if you can already get those stations via an antenna, um, then Sling might, you know, would probably be a good option for you. Um, or if you're looking, like, you know, to save money. Uh, something would also be a good option because you can just get the orange package or just get the blue package and spend less than, you know, some of the other options out there which require a uh, higher base uh, package cost. However, it's going to be worse for fans who cannot get OTA stations, um, you know, via antenna. Of course, you can supplement that with like Paramount Plus or with Peacock, but you can't do anything to, to get Fox um, or ABC, unfortunately. It's also going to be worse for fans who want to record, you know, and rewatch many hours of games because, as I mentioned, the DVR is relatively small. All right, next, let's talk about YouTube TV. So, YouTube TV uh, raised its price back in March to $73 a month. It also has a Sports Plus add-on for $11 a month. Um, it has an option for 4K viewing and to get unlimited streams um, on your home network. Uh, for an extra $10 a month. Um, otherwise, you get the three simultaneous streams, you know, just with the base plan. The DVR, however, does allow for unlimited space or unlimited recordings, but you can only keep recordings for nine months. You can see all the channels uh, listed there, so it pretty much carries everything. And to get Red Zone, you do have to get the Sports Plus um, add-on. Now, my opinion of YouTube TV is that um, it's it's one of the best choices out there because um, its base price is in line uh, with you know most of the other options that have the four uh, network you know over the air network channels. It has the unlimited DVR. Um, it has a key plays catch up feature. So if you go to watch a game, you can just choose to watch the key plays, and it'll show you you know what should be the most important plays, and then you can like catch up. Um, to real time pretty quickly. It also 
uh, is going to have multi-view ability, which is the uh, basically the ability to watch four different channels at once. The only issue, the only problem is uh, that it is going to be preset. You won't be able to choose the specific channels you want to watch. There's going to be kind of preset combinations that you will have to choose from um, at this point. So who is it best for? Um, general fans, you know, just of, of the NFL, um, those who want to record and, and uh, watch many hours of football. However, if you do need ESPN Plus, then, you know, YouTube TV plus the cost of ESPN Plus will be more than, say, Hulu Live, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, which includes ESPN Plus in its cost. Also, another thing to mention is, and I'll you know, get to this in more details at the end, but uh, NFL Sunday Ticket, now that YouTube and YouTube TV are selling it, um, if you are a person who is interested in purchasing Sunday Ticket and also a, you know, streaming service as well, YouTube TV, you know, has the $100 discount available for YouTube TV subscribers. So that's another um, instance of people that, you know, YouTube TV would, might be best for as well. All right, so let's talk about Hulu with live TV. Currently, you have the base plan, which is $70 a month, and that includes uh, Disney Plus, the ads version, and ESPN Plus. There is technically a $69 a month plan, which only includes the live TV and does not include those two add-ons meaning it does not include Disney Plus, it does not include ESPN Plus. Um, so you only save a dollar, but if you're already getting those from somewhere else, like through Verizon, then you know it's better to save a dollar than spend it. Uh, however, in a couple months, actually about six weeks, in October 12th, the price of the base plan will go up to $77 um, a month. Okay, it's going to increase by $7, so just keep that in mind. Its sports add-on is $10 a month, it also has an unlimited, you know, space DVR, where again you can only keep recordings for nine months. Uh, however, it only allows two simultaneous streams, say as compared to YouTube TV, which allows three on its base plan. But it also has the add-on available, where you can get unlimited streams, or they call it unlimited screens, um, on your home network for an extra ten dollars a month, similar to you know what YouTube TV offers. The base plan there. Pretty much offers the exact same you know channels that YouTube TV has, except of course it includes ESPN Plus, and if you get the sports add-on, um, then you can also get uh, Red Zone as well. So Hulu with Live TV is a good choice if you want or need ESPN Plus and or Disney Plus. You know because those are included in the cost, you don't have to pay for them separately. Um, it currently is the cheapest option to get all your local channels and Red Zone, basically at $80 total um, to get both those. However, uh, there are still some issues with fast forwarding through ads on live TV on certain devices. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times I might start, I might record a game and start watching it late after it started. But I'll start from the beginning and then I'll fast forward through the ads. Um, or sometimes between as well to try to catch up to Hulu still restricts that on certain devices. Like last year, I could fast forward on my iPhone, but I could not fast. It wouldn't let me fast forward on when watching on a computer, you know, desktop computer, or on a uh, Roku device. So just something to be aware of. If you are not in a situation like me, though, then you could probably just, you know, ignore that. So who would uh, Hulu Live be best for? Well, uh, just like YouTube TV, you know, general fans of the NFL, uh, fans who also need Disney Plus and or ESPN Plus, um, and fans who want to record many hours of football because it has the unlimited, you know, DVR. It would be worst for basically fans who don't need those extra add-ons, who don't need Disney Plus or don't need ESPN Plus, or those who want to be able to watch more than two streams, you know, at the same time. Because, like I said, the base plan only includes two simultaneous streams. Next, let's talk about Fubo. So it has two base plans. Uh, the cheapest one is Pro, $75 a month. The step above that is Elite, which is $85 a month. Um, you do need Elite or 
Um, there's certainly another one called, I think, Ultimate, which is above that. But you need a lead or higher in order to view, watch 4K content. Uh, however, there is an RSN fee of 11 to $14 per month, uh, depending on how many RSNs you have. Uh, so if you have an RSN in your market, then those prices there are actually going to be increased by 11 to $14 uh, for, in terms of what you pay. It also has a Sports Plus add-on for $11 a month, which is where you're going to find Red Zone. There are other add-ons with sports um, channels in them, but none of them are you know, NFL-related. Uh, the DVR is 1,000 hours, so it's not unlimited, but it is still fairly large. However, there is uh, no time limit on recordings, unlike some of the other services out there. And it does allow for 10 simultaneous streams you know, on your home network in-home. So the pro plan, cheapest plan, has all of your, uh, you know, basic uh, NFL channels there, broadcast network, CSPN, NFL network. And then, like I said, you need the Sports Plus add-on in order to get Red Zone. So my opinion on Fubo is that it currently is the most expensive price point to get NFL uh, network Red Zone. Because you're talking about seventy-five dollars for the for pro, plus possibly eleven dollars for an RSN. That's eighty-six, plus another eleven dollars for the Sports Plus add-on. So now you're up to ninety-seven. However, it does offer ten streams, you know, at no extra cost, which is much more than like you know the two or three that some others offer. And it does have multi-view available, like YouTube TV. However, it's only on Apple TV devices, but uh, you can select the channels that you want to watch. It's not preset combinations like YouTube TV is going to be. So Fubo would be best for, you know, of course, general fans because it carries pretty much all the channels. Um, those who need to watch more than three streams at a time, you know, maybe you're in a household which has, you know, a lot of people in it and multiple people want to be watching, uh, you know, channels at the same time. Or if you need uh, RSNs for other sports, baseball, hockey or basketball, for example, uh, Fubo carries almost all the RSNs. I think there's about four total that it does not carry. However, it would be worse for basically fans that are looking to save money because, like I said, uh, to get Red Zone, it is m basically the most expensive option out there, again, if you have an R at least one RSN in your market. Next, we have DirecTV Stream. So it has technically four total plans. Um, I'm only going to talk about really two of them, though, because they have all the NFL channels. You have entertainment, $75 a month. Then the next is choice, which is $100 a month. Then ultimate, which is $110 a month, but that doesn't have any more channels than uh, choice does for NFL purposes. And new this year, they have the sports pack, $15 a month. So the DVR does have unlimited space. Uh, but you can only keep recordings for nine months, similar to YouTube TV and Hulu Live. However, it does offer 20 simultaneous streams on your home network um, and three still outside of the home network, you know, in addition to that. Those are included, you know, in the in the cost, no extra fees for them. So you can see the channels there. Basically, the entertainment package includes your broadcast networks and ESPN. Then Choice also includes NFL Network. But if you want NFL Network Red Zone, you have to add on the Sports Pack. But the thing is, the Sports Pack also includes NFL Network. So it's actually cheaper to buy the entertainment plan, the cheapest one, and the Sports Pack, because that comes out to only $90 a month, than going with, say, Choice and the Sports Pack, um, or even just Choice on its own. Uh, because, you know, $90 is less than $100 or less than $115. So my recommendation for DirecTV Stream is to look at the entertainment plus the sports pack. Because, um, again, that's still cheaper than the uh, choice plan. And there's a lot of other, you know, non-NFL sports networks in the sports pack. So my opinion for DirecTV Stream, okay, the base price, $75 for entertainment, you know, for the lowest level package, that's comparable to other offerings out there. YouTube TV 73, Hulu Live 70, Vidgo 70. However, that package does not include NFL Network or NFL Network Red Zone. You know, it just has your broadcast networks and ESPN and nothing else. Uh, however, on the positive side, DirecTV Stream does have, I think, pretty much all of the RSNs, the regional sports networks. 
Um, so that's something to, to uh, keep in mind as well. So DirecTV Stream would be best for fans who need RSNs for other sports, uh, fans who maybe do not need NFL Network or NFL Network Red Zone, if you just want the base, you know, over-the-air networks and ESPN, or if, again, if you're in a large household and need to watch more than three streams at the same time, uh, DirecTV Stream would be a good choice. Again, it would be probably worse for fans who are looking to save money because even with entertainment and sports pack, you're talking $90 total. That is still more than, you know, the comparable packages from uh, Hulu Live and YouTube TV. You know, when you add on the uh, sports packs to get a uh, red zone, you know, it's still more than um, each of those. All right, let's talk next about Vidgo. So Vidgo has two base plans and they've also gone up in price. Uh, Plus is now $70 a month. Premium is now $85 a month. Uh, the DVR is very small. I believe it's only 20 hours um, and you can only keep recordings for nine months. On the website, so it said that the DVR is included in the premium service, but that for Plus, it was only for the first 90 days. Um, however, if you look at the website today, it doesn't really, it says DVR is listed under both, but it doesn't list any details. Um, so I don't know if that's still the case or not. It does offer three simultaneous streams. However, it only includes two of the OTA networks. It basically includes ABC and Fox, um, and they don't have those in every market, but they do have national feeds for if your, mark, if your local ABC or Fox is not carried. So it doesn't have CBS. It doesn't have NBC. It just has ABC and Fox and ESPN and NFL Network. Those are going to be in the, the cheaper plan, the plus plan. But if you want NFL Network Red Zone, you have to upgrade to the premium uh, you know, more expensive plan. So Vidgo, uh, because of its basically recent uh, price increases over the past couple of years, is just basically not you know a good option in my opinion. They when they originally started out, it was like forty five dollars for the cheaper plan and fifty five for the more expensive. Um, but they had a five dollar discount running, so it was like forty and fifty. But the prices have just kept, you know, that was a couple of years ago. Prices have just kept inching up and up and up to where it's not really, you know, competitive, especially when it's, it doesn't have all four broadcast networks. It's missing, like you said, CBS and NBC. The DVR is very, very small. Um, and the service, at least when I used it two years ago and three years ago, was just very buggy compared to the other options, you know, that are out there. Um, but it is, again, you know, somewhat of a cheaper way to get ESPN and NFL Network with some locals. You know, it's $70 for ESPN and NFL Network. It's, um, and it does have some locals, unlike Sling, which may not have any in your uh, area. So I would say it's best for fans who don't need NFL Network Red Zone because to get that, you know, it's going to be 85 bucks a month. Also, it would be best for fans who want the other uh, channels that it offers. So, for example, it offers Tennis Channel. It has Pac-12 Network, uh, Networks as well, which not all the services carry. However, it would be worse for fans who cannot get your local channels via antenna because, like I said, it is missing CBS and NBC. Granted, you could supplement that with Paramount Plus and uh, Peacock, but now you're just talking about adding on, you know, more money to the cost of it, you know, $6 each or more. Also, fans who want to record and, you know, rewatch many hours of games, not video is not a good option. So I pretty much, you know, cannot recommend it um, at this point. Next, let's talk about ESPN Plus. So currently the base plan is $10 a month or $100 for the year. However, just like Hulu Live, it's going to be having a price increase in uh, the middle of October. It'll, it'll go up to $11 a month and the yearly rate will increase to $110 per year. It offers five uh, simultaneous streams, um, and it'll carry one NFL exclusive game in 2023. That's a Denver-Jacksonville, you know, Sunday, 9.30 a.m. international game. However, it is going to also simulcast nine other um, ESPN slash ABC, you know, Monday Night Football or, again, the last Saturday um, of the season games. So who would it be best for? Well, obviously, if you're an out-of-market fan of Denver and Jacksonville, you know, this is the only way to watch that game. <clears throat> because if you're in market, it's also going to be broadcast on a local uh, OTA station in, you know, Denver and, and Jacksonville. 
Uh, I would say also, it's not listed here, but like, you know, if you like the other sports that it offers, you know, now with ESPN having part of the NHL's package, it has basically the out of market, you know, hockey package used to be called center ice, um, or it has a lot of college football now. So if those are, if there's other ancillary sports that you're interested in watching, you know, obviously then it would be, um, best for those people, but for any other just straight NFL fans, you know, there's pretty much no need for it. Oh, I should mention one other thing too. It does have um, NFL primetime, you know, the highlight show with Chris Berman and now uh, Booger McFarlane. So if you are a fan of that, um, that is, you know, something else just to consider as well. All right, let's talk about Amazon Prime. So Amazon Prime now costs $15 a month or $140 for the year. Uh, most people are getting it for the, you know, shipping benefits, ordering from Amazon. But you can also technically subscribe to Prime Video only, which is $9 a month. Um, it's going to carry 16, you know, Thursday Night Football exclusive games in 2023. Uh, although, as I mentioned previously, you can watch these games for free on Twitch as well. Okay. Um, this would be best for, you know, any out-of-market fans who are playing on Thursday night uh, football. So, you know, you're a fan of, I don't mean, I'm, I haven't looked at the Thursday night football schedule yet, but whatever. You're a fan of the Bills and you live in Phoenix. You know, you would need um, either Twitch or, again, Amazon Prime in order to watch uh, that game if they're playing uh, Thursday night football. It's going to be worse for pretty much everyone else because it only has those Thursday um, Thursday uh, night games. You know, there's no other real, n no other real, you know, NFL, uh, much NFL content to it. All right. Paramount Plus, which is the streaming service, you know, basically offered by CBS, uh, has two plans, essential and premium. The essential plan is $6 a month or $60 for the year. The premium plan is $12 a month or $120 for the year. The essential plan includes your local CBS NFL games, um, but the premium plan obviously includes that in addition to a live stream of your local CBS channel and um, without ads, so ad-free. So this would be best for basically those who cannot get CBS via an antenna or if you subscribe to a service that does not include CBS, like Sling or Vidgo, uh, for example. Um, it would be worse for pretty much everyone else. If you're going to subscribe to one of the, you know, services that includes all the networks, then you pretty much, you know, don't need this because you can watch your CBS games there. Or if you can get it via an antenna, you know, then you don't need this. Next, we have Peacock, which is a streaming service offered by NBC. It has two plans, uh, Premium and Premium Plus, and if you notice, the pricing for them is identical uh, to what the, is charged for Paramount Plus. You know, $6 a month for the lower one, $12 a month for the higher one, $60 a year lower, $120 a year for the higher plan. Um, and the breakdown of what's included is similar. You know, just Premium, the cheaper one, includes the NFL games, which is NBC Sunday Night Football, uh, while Premium Plus... Uh, Includes your uh, live stream of your local NBC station. It also has limited ads. I guess it's not completely ad-free, um, but it's as close to it as possible. The other uh, thing that is different, though, among these two services is Peacock will have two exclusive games uh, for this season coming up 2023. The first is a Bills Chargers game on December 23rd. The other is going to be one of the wild card playoff games. It'll be the game that's on Saturday night, um, usually starting, uh, I think, around like 8.05, 8.15 or so. Um, so just be aware of that. There will be two Peacock exclusive games uh, for this season coming up. Of course, as I mentioned previously, uh, those games will air on over-the-air stations in the markets of the teams that are playing in them. So Peacock would be best for those who cannot get NBC via antenna or if you subscribe to a service that doesn't carry NBC, like Sling um, or Vidgo, for example. Um, I guess also if you know you need to see the Bills Chargers game, or obviously if you want to see the wildcard playoff game um, as well. But uh, pretty much everyone else, um, you know, it's not going to be it's not going to be needed for. All right, now let's talk about NFL Plus. So NFL Plus uh, originated last year, 
And basically what happened was previously um, local in-market Sunday afternoon and also national games were streamed on phones and tablets. Uh, originally it was with Verizon, and then it also expanded to include Yahoo and the Yahoo Sports app after Verizon bought Yahoo. Um, but that deal expired, and so last year uh, NFL Plus um, basically – came about and it had one plan that allowed you to watch your local games on mobile devices only and then a second more expensive plan which uh basically was game pass um just kind of rebranded with a new name and so game pass had all the various replays uh, of the games condensed replays all 22 film coaches film uh basically everything for all games in market and out of market all right so this year uh, the prices have increased a little bit. The base plan is $7 a month or $50 a year. The premium plan is $15 a month or $100 a year. They were having sales um, when the prices were announced a couple weeks ago, though, that you could get the premium plan for only $80 um, a year. And I think the and the base plan also for only $40 per year. So they were each discounted, you know, basically by 20% if you paid the yearly price. So the base plan uh, carries all your local and national games on mobile devices only so that's phones and tablets so that those games are your sunday afternoon games those are the national games thursday night football sunday night football monday night football um, it also should include the sunday morning uh games international games as well now <clears throat> most of those games are on NFL Network, and this is something new for this year. Uh, NFL Plus now includes a live stream of NFL Network, and that's available on all devices. That's not restricted to mobile only. That can be watched on the computer, on TV, you know, connected device and everything. Um, it also includes live audio uh, for every game as well. And now uh, the premium plan uh, includes all of those features Plus the various game replays I just talked about, you know, condensed um, full games, condensed games, all 22 footage. And it also includes a live feed of NFL Network Red Zone. And that feed of NFL Network Red Zone is, in, is available on all devices. So NFL Network and Red Zone can be watched on any device, phone, tablet, computer, TV, you know, laptop, whatever. Okay. It's only the local... Um, and national games that are restricted to being viewed on mobile devices when you watch them live. Because obviously it replays after the fact you could watch them on any device. So what's my opinion of NFL Plus, or specifically the you know revamped version of it? So the good thing about it is now fans have an option to get both NFL Network and Red Zone without having to pay a subscription to a cable company or satellite company or streaming service. You know, in the past, uh, the only way to get Red Zone, except for uh, the there was a mobile version of it where you could only view it on mobile devices. Um, it costs usually about $35 for the entire season. Um, but outside of that, the only way to get it um, and watch it on whatever you know device you wanted, on a TV or a computer or whatever, was to... Uh, buy a service, you know, like Sling or one of the others, and then most likely you'd have to get the sports, uh, you know, add-on as well. But now you do not have to do that. You can just pay $15 a month or $80 for the year, and you can get Red Zone and, you know, NFL Network in addition to that. So who would NFL Plus be good for? Well, uh, first, it would be good for fans who cannot get OTA stations in their area, but, you know, don't want to pay a lot of money for a streaming service. And are fine with watching, um, you know, just on a small mobile device or tablet. Um, also, if you want to watch replays of out-of-market games, um, this is, you know, that's a uh, person at the service would be good for as well. And as I mentioned, you know, if you want, if you want NFL Network Red Zone and NFL Network, but you do not need the other channels, um, then the NFL Plus would be an excellent option for you. Because, like I said, they can be watched on any device. Who would it be worse for? I mean, basically, if you are going to subscribe to a streaming service that's going to include all your local channels, or you have an, or let's say you have an antenna, and it already includes, you know, maybe NFL Network, and or maybe you have the Sports Plus add-on for other reasons, and it includes NFL Network, you know, Red Zone, and it has ESPN and so on, um, then 
you know, NFL Plus is not really needed. The only reason you would really need it would possibly be for like listening to live audio or to watch the uh, the game replays. But if you're already getting all of the linear cable channels that air NFL games, then you know there's not much of a reason to subscribe to it. All right, now let's talk about NFL Sunday Ticket. So new this year, it's being offered by YouTube. Um, basically with YouTube TV or as a standalone product via primetime channels. Now, you can see the prices uh, listed there on the screen for the various options. If you add Red Zone to it, it's an extra $40 um, as compared to just getting YouTube, uh, excuse me, Sunday Ticket on its own. You can see there's a $100 difference if you sign up as a standalone product versus um, buying it as an active YouTube TV subscriber. And one other thing to keep in mind is the prices that are listed on the screen here include a $50 discount, um, which is available through September 19th. So the actual list price for these products is $50 more than what you see there. Um, also, YouTube has announced a monthly payment option. This just happened a couple weeks ago where you can make four kind of monthly payments for the service. However, you... I mean, you cannot cancel the service in the sense that if you agree to sign up for it, you're still going to be charged, you know, the full amount, the full uh, total. They also announced a student plan, um, which only includes one stream on one device uh, for a significantly cheaper rate, you know, of $109. However, the regular Sunday ticket uh, will allow unlimited streams at home and also two extra streams outside of your home uh, network. And you can watch either via the YouTube app. Basically, the easiest way to find the games is go to the NFL's channel in the YouTube app, and you can see individual events listed there. Or you can also use the YouTube TV app. Um, even if you're not a YouTube TV subscriber, you can sign into the YouTube TV app, and you can find the games there in the live guide. Um, or you can also use the NFL app as well. Now, one thing just to mention before I continue, I have done multiple videos uh, about NFL Sunday Ticket, so this is just going to be a brief overview, this slide in the next one. Um, but keep in mind, if you want more information, please check out uh, my links in the description below for the other videos I've done on Sunday Ticket and talking about some of the, uh, you know, the, some of the details about it. So a couple of things just to be aware of, and again, these are mentioned in a lot more detail in the other videos I've done. So the YouTube TV app will have full DVR functionality. So that means fast forwarding, rewinding, pausing, and recording games that you're able to rewatch. However, if you watch in the YouTube app, you'll still be able to fast forward, rewind, and pause, but you will not be able to record. So if you want to record games, you have to use the YouTube TV app. Um, also, it's going to, uh, YouTube has confirmed that Sunday Ticket will include the condensed replays um, as it did in past years when DirecTV had it. Um, also, a multi-view is now going to be available. That's where you can watch, you know, two to four games or technically two to four channels at one time on the screen. However, it's only going to include preset games as of now. So what that means is you will not be able to go through and select, um, you know, I want this game, and I want that game, and I want the Lions game, and I want the Bills game. Instead, you're going to choose from pre-set pre um, combinations of games. Okay, so just be, uh, just be aware of that. There's also uh, other multiple promotional offers out there that you can get um, <clears throat> a discount off the YouTube uh of the um, NFL Sunday ticket uh, price. So there's offers with Verizon. Existing customers can save $100, or you can get the entire product for free if you sign up for a new line of phone service and buy a phone, or you sign up for, <clears throat> excuse me, new home internet service. Again, check out my, I have another video uh, specifically about that. So check out that for more details. There's also a promotion for buying uh, certain, <clears throat> excuse me, TCL brand televisions to save $100 or $200 off the price of it. There's also a Comcast promotion to save up to $200 off it. And there's also a FanDuel promotion as well. Um, it's like a whatever $5 bet or something, you can save $100 off the price of it. So uh, just be aware of that. One other thing that's been mentioned too is that the home area restrictions, which typically apply to YouTube TV, 
um, in terms of needing to, you know, basically be signed in from the home area once every 90 days and all that stuff will not be uh, applied to NFL Sunday ticket. Now, what's my opinion about NFL Sunday ticket? Well, so this is going to be uh, highly recommended for any fans who have a favorite team, which is out of market, you know, compared to where you live. And uh, also teams that don't appear on national games very often. So <clears throat> I'll talk about this, the third bullet point below. But like teams like the Chiefs or say now the Eagles, um, you know, even the Bills, Steelers, so on. Those teams are generally very popular and they appear on national games a lot. And the national games are not going to be aired on NFL Sunday ticket. You know what I mean? Meaning that they're going to appear on Sunday night or possibly Monday night or Thursday night. Or the other things are sometimes in Sunday afternoon at the 4.25 p.m., you know, like the double header game, the second game. Um, sometimes that game is aired as a standalone game, meaning the entire country gets it. Um, even though it is still a Sunday afternoon game. Um, and if that's the case, that means, I mean, you would watch it, you'd be able to watch it, you know, in your local um, Fox or CBS station. But the point is, it's not going to be available as part of Sunday ticket. So uh, that's one thing, you know, to keep in mind. The other thing, too, is that flex scheduling, which I'll talk about, you know, coming up in a little bit, um, could reduce the number of Sunday ticket games that a team will appear in. So, you know, as of right now, <clears throat> you have your team that you're looking to watch might be scheduled to play a game in like week 13 at 1 p.m. All right. But as the season goes on, that game could be flexed out to Sunday night football or Monday night football or even whatever Thursday night football. And as a result, then it would no longer be available, you know, as a Sunday ticket game instead. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> as I said, some teams are already scheduled for up to seven national games. So that means, you know, they're only going to, uh, right, so right now, they're only going to have 10 total games available for Sunday ticket viewing. Um, and they could have even less if some of those 10 games end up being flexed to national windows as well. I mean, the reverse could work too. They could be in a national game and they could be flexed out of that to a Sunday afternoon one. Um, but just, you know, be aware. <clears throat> some people will find that there really aren't that many games um, that will be available to watch under Sunday ticket. Now, a couple things to know. I just mentioned this on the last slide. So flex scheduling is the idea that the NFL – can change the time and or the day of games um, that are originally scheduled for Sundays into or out of you know Thursday night football, Monday night football, and Sunday night football. Previously, they could only flex schedule for Sunday night football, but this year it is expanded and it includes Monday night football and Thursday night football as well. You can see the weeks on the screen which games can be flexed into and out of. Um, notice for Monday and Thursday night football, it's only like, you know, basically towards the end of the season, whereas for Sunday night football, it starts in week five and it goes all the way through the last week. Um, usually the announcements are made at least 12 days um, in advance. But again, the, the whole key or the important thing about this is that, you know, you could be expecting a game to be on one, on one channel or available via one service, like say it's going to be out of market for you, it's going to be on Sunday ticket, and then it gets flexed to Sunday night football or Monday night football. And then all of a sudden, it's not available on Sunday ticket. Instead, you have to watch it on ESPN or uh, you know NBC or whatever. So just uh, something to be aware of that if you don't get those channels, you know then you wouldn't be able um, to watch the game. So the first thing I have here in terms of documents, um, basically resource materials, is a what I call a streaming service channel chart. It's just basically a summary of all the main uh, channels airing NFL games, and these are all linear cable channels, so linear cable channels, not you know streaming services. And it basically just you know says yes or no. Does this service carry the channel or not? There'll be a link to a PDF file in the description below, so you can click on that. Um, and look at it. Um, but otherwise, you can see pretty much every service 
carries you know every possible channel with the exception of sling and vidgo not carrying cbs and vidgo also not carrying um nbc but otherwise you know everything uh is available now here's another little uh chart and this basically just shows the cheapest way to get various either individual channels or cheapest combinations of channels so if you look at this um, basically the channels or the combination of channels are across the top right and then in the box it just says the cheapest way to get it so for espn for example obviously sling orange forty dollars a month cheapest way to get it for nfl network you know you have multiple options because now you can get nfl plus or you can just go with um, let's say sling blue which would be the cheapest option and so on so this is just another resource that can be used um, like i said to help decide you know which uh, option to go with or which thing to look at let's talk about the playoffs uh, now a little bit you know postseason games so NFL playoffs are going to be split between you know ESPN and ABC uh, CBS of course Fox NBC and also Peacock because like I guess mentioned earlier Peacock will have the one exclusive um, Saturday night wild card game ABC ESPN will carry one game, and that's the Monday night uh, wild card game. The exact number of games that are going to be on, you know, CBS and Fox and NBC is to be determined. They, you know, because they don't know exactly uh, how the wild card and division series are going to be split up between them. I mean, we do know though that the NFL championship game will be on Fox, the AFC championship game will be on CBS. And Super Bowl 58 will be carried by CBS. CBS has streamed the game for free previously, so I would expect uh, them to do that uh, again this year as well. So here are my personal rankings uh, for you know the various streaming services, various options out there. Um, I like YouTube TV the best um, over Hulu Live. And the main reason for that is because of the functionality, the meaning the multi-view that's available, in addition to the key plays, you know, catch-up feature. And the other thing, which I think I might have forgotten to mention earlier, is that YouTube TV um, allows you to basically record or add to your DVR all NFL games with just like one click. So that means you can just go in have it choose all NFL games, and then they'll all be there in the library. You don't need to bother like adding individual teams or conferences or whatever like you do on some of the other services DVRs. So it's just so much easier um, to do that on YouTube TV, um, especially with the fact that Hulu Live will be increasing its price by $7. So even if you have to buy ESPN Plus separate, the price difference you know, is going to uh, decrease a lot once it gets to mid-October. Uh, one thing I would note is that Sling TV, um, I would actually put that a lot higher. If you can already get all four, you know, OTA networks via an antenna, um, I would probably uh, jump that up. I mean, maybe to number one or number two. You wouldn't, I um, mean, you don't necessarily need to, um, but it's something else, uh, you know, to consider. Uh, Vidgo, I basically cannot, you know, recommend at this point. And like NFL Plus um, would primarily only be recommended, like it, if you're looking for a cheap option to get Red Zone, you know, or just NFL Network, or if you need uh, the game replays, if you want to be able to watch, you know, replays of out-of-market games, you don't need to watch them live, or you don't want to spend all the money um, for Sunday Ticket to watch, you know, the out-of-market games live. So that's it for my uh, NFL cord cutting guide for this season 2023 that's coming up. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please do leave them below in the comments, or you can also email me. Email's listed on the screen. Um, like I said, the PDF file will be posted uh, to my website, you know, which you can see listed there as well. And like I said, also check out the... Um, the videos on NFL Sunday Ticket if you have more questions about those. And I also have a bunch of videos showing you how you can download, save, slash record um, either live or replays of sporting events. So this would include, any, I mean, NFL, would include college football, so on, uh, from various channels and everything that are out there. Uh, you know, just look for those playlists, uh, look for those videos on my channel. And um, otherwise, 
uh, let's enjoy the season.